The seventh guest, 3 Kickstarter, appears to be dead in the water, which is a shame because I loved the first two games and I would love to see a third. Now there's no reason it can't still somehow gain momentum and succeed, but as it stands they're in trouble and I think I know why. This is the Pants List. Top 5 Things the Seventh Guest 3 Kickstarter Did Wrong Number 5 KICKSTARTER'S TOO LONG! Trilobite Games went with a 40-day Kickstarter as opposed to a 30-day, and I have no idea why. I mean, it sounds good on paper, more time means more money and a higher chance to succeed, right? Wrong-o, moose face. There are reasons why the most successful Kickstarters take a 30-day campaign. It's a simple deadline, one everybody can understand, it doesn't drag on too long, and it's short enough to keep pressure on potential backers. A Kickstarter campaign is exhausting work, and making it longer will wear down your entire team. Not to mention longer campaigns seem to engender more of a wait-and-see mentality on potential backers. This is especially true if there are other problems with the Kickstarter. For example, number four, EXCLUSIVE CONTENT! The $80 tier reads that people who donate that much and up get access to a special room in the game. This is a huge no-no. You know why? Uh, let's try and explain it this way. Say I've got $30 in my pocket. I come across your Kickstarter. I remember the seventh guest games, and for 20 bucks, I can get the full game when it comes out, assuming they don't screw the pooch like some people. Wait, people who donate $80 get access to a part of the game that I don't? Well, why would I pay $20 just to get an incomplete game? Rob Landeros and Trilobite Games may not mean it that way, but that's how it comes off. And just like that, I'm uninterested, and you don't get any of my money. Kickstarter backers have historically shown preferences towards games that don't wall off content. Simple rule of thumb. No DLC, no DRM, and no exclusive content for higher level backers. Number three. Where are the game devs? Now, I know they posted some YouTube vids of themselves further down on the Kickstarter page, but I'm just talking about the Kickstarter video itself, because a lot of potential backers will just watch that and move on if you haven't got their attention. And every successful Kickstarter video I've seen eventually has the game devs come forward, hat in hand, to explain why they're so passionate about their project, and to ask personally for our support. But not this one. If I'd been in charge of putting this video together, I would have had Stauf appear in the beginning and the end, but the largest section in the middle would have been Rob Landeros talking about The Seventh Guest 3, introducing us to the team and some of the things that they've been making for the game, and closing with him asking Seventh Guest fans and Kickstarter backers for support. Instead... Number 2. The video is weird and Stauf is for people! Trilobite seems to have forgotten or disregarded the criticism that the 11th Hour received when it made Stauf into a game show host. People like Stauf best when he's himself, a perfect mix of mischief and menace, rage and relish. Wait, now he's a bum? W wait, now Stauf is Geppetto? Now he's Rod Serling? What? What? I get that Robert Hirschbeck is a talented actor, and as performances go, he's to be commended. But why? You know what fans of the original games wanted to see? This guy. And while I'm at it, what the hell was the point of this? They don't look or sound anything like the original actors who played these characters. Granted, Brian Dutton's been played by three incredibly different people at this point. Brian Dutton's not even a real character anymore, he's more like an abstract concept or a changeling. Regardless, if you were going to have the characters show up, have them sell us on the concept of The Seventh Guest 3, because this ain't cutting it. Number one. The video looks unprofessional! This is the absolute killer. When I heard six months or so ago that Trilobite was planning on doing a Kickstarter, I was ecstatic. Hell, I spent about $100 of my own money and about a month of my time putting together a Haunted House-style review of the 11th Hour to support them. So when I saw their Kickstarter video, my jaw hit the floor. They had six months, ostensibly a much bigger budget than I did, and this is what they come up with? You can see through the chair! They're using the kind of effects that wouldn't be impressive on public access television in the 1990s, and they're screwing them up? 
There are some awkward audio and video cuts, and the video used to have some really poor sound balancing, but it looks like they've re-uploaded a slightly better cut since then. Still, on the whole, it looks like something that not a lot of time or talent went into, and that's a huge problem. A few people defended it, saying that the shoddy production was on purpose, so it would be in a style similar to the original games. Even if that's true, that's really dumb. The only people who would get the joke are people who've played the original games. You've alienated everyone else. That's a lot of potential money down the drain. Now don't get me wrong, they did a lot of things right. They didn't ask for too much money, and the rest of the Kickstarter page is fantastic. There are some great rewards there. And the Kickstarter's still going on. It might not be too late to save it, but I'd recommend that Rob Landeros and Trilobite Games scrap it and start over.